guys, good evening. Um, I did some more work on the barn today. Uh, it was a pretty good day. Wind was terrible today. I I probably tried filming the intro to that thing probably three times, but it was so damn windy out. Go to check it, and it's just awful. So, so anyhow, I'm gonna explain what we did today in the video. Um, Working on some floor joists, I had one uh, in every bay that I have, I've got a floor joist that it's only a 5 inch deep pocket instead of an 8 inch. So what I ended up, ha what I end up having to do is I have to notch it out. And I kind of discussed that, you can hear that halfway decent in the video, but I apologize. It's always windy here so it makes it really hard to get you guys good shots when it's like that outside. But today was kind of a good day to run the camera so you could see where we're at in the process and a few things on what you want to look for when you're selecting timber. That was uh, that was part of the conversation today, um, part of the point of this video. When you're selecting uh, some of your timber, there's things you want to look for in that timber. You're looking for big knots and what you need to do to work around them and keeping in mind how much structural integrity are you going to lose based on the size of those knots, their location. Um, the other thing, grain shake, you know, I pointed some of that out in the video coming up. You'll see a good example of that. Just different patterns of the grain, grain run out. It's important when you're selecting timbers, you know, grade two or better. Grade two, uh, it's going to have smaller knots, not going to be full of the giant ones. Clear would be perfect, but you're not going to find clear timber that big unless unless you have a magical timber source. So I didn't use the tractor today. I, I played Billy Badass because it's so friggin' muddy out, I can't run that tractor to get the boom pole I made for it. I will bury it in my yard. Uh, probably should have planned that out better when the ground was frozen, but too much going on. Um, so like I said, we Billy Badassed it, me, myself, and I, up uh, probably five or six of them today up a ladder, and they're they're heavy. That last one I put in at the end of the video there, uh, that one probably goes about a buck eighty, and may not seem like a lot, but it's a lot alone, especially the length of it. So. Anyhow, hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. You can send me a message through uh, through the channel. I'll get it. You can send me an email through the website. I'll put a link at the end of the, the video on it. Um, but anyhow, hope you guys enjoy it, and I apologize for the wind. I wish I could have gotten you some better footage today, but that wind was just sucking. So... Hopefully tomorrow is supposed to be real nice up here, about 60. Hopefully uh, hopefully we don't have the wind. So anyhow, hope you enjoy. Okay, so part of what you're looking for is spots like that. All right, that's, you got a big cluster of knots right there. And then if you look, a little dirty, see how twisted that grain is? I mean, that's that's pretty twisted. That's an invitation to disaster. You know, because that grain is not going to be stable. Now, you can see that knot cluster doesn't look to go too deep. But that's not the only issue with this beam. And that knot really isn't that bad. But if we come down, you look close. Get the string out of the way here. You look... Uh, it is hard to see on the screen. If you look close, you see a lot of grain run out. And what I mean by grain run out is that grain comes down to the edge of the board and it just kind of stops right there. So that's grain run out. So this log was not milled with it. Uh, must have had a real good crown on it when it got milled. So these I actually had to buy from some Amish and Amish saw mill. This is the only part of this barn I have not milled myself because uh, I just did not have the logs at the time and the price was right. Now we get to the middle of it, it's not that bad. You know, it's pretty straight grain there. 
then you get over here. Then here's the spot that really has me concerned. You see that right there, that, that crack? That is cracked right along that grain line. And that's what I mean by grain shake. That's those layers are actually separated. This grain is real twisted. You get down here, it's even worse. And what will end up happening? That'll just follow through and over time as this thing dries out and the sap leaves it and everything, it's going to be pretty nasty. Uh, I just absolutely cannot use that one. So if we look on the back side of it, let me flip it over here just a second. go. Now the back side of this is pretty nice. And it's really not too bad. And if it wasn't for that grain shake on the other side I would probably use this because you can see how few knots there are in this on this side of it. And that's not bad at all. It's a nice piece. Then there's the other side of that knot that I showed you at first there. And that's not so deep that it would cause a problem in normal circumstances. Like I said, look at that grain structure around it. That is a future weak spot. That's what you don't want. Um, you can see... Let's... What we have there. Now it might be hard to see because this end's kind of rough. But that line right there, that's sapwood and grass from the yard. But so you get a line of sapwood there that runs along this beam. You just got some goofy grains. This thing, this tree must have grew in a friggin' wind tunnel. But uh, anyhow, we're not gonna use that. So we get over to this one, and this one's a little more like it. And I actually have that's about the center of the grain you can see when they use their uh, harvesting equipment sometimes they uh, they leave these bottoms real rough but that heartwood right there that is perfectly centered in this I mean that is beautiful and that's what you want so if we look down this one grains real straight get a little closer here grain drill straight there's not a lot of knots that I'm too concerned about I mean we've got a decent sized one there but that's right in the middle so that's not too bad you got where a couple came together but if you look at the grain structure around it it's really not that bad we got another little bunch here but those will get cut off because I've got to trim this down so but anyhow that's just some things that you want to look for when you are selecting. Well, I tried to get us some more footage of uh, cutting this joint here, um, but wind has been so nasty today that it's kind of uh, kind of hard to run the camera. I got a calm spot right now, but anyhow, this uh, this floor joist right here, I have one in each bay which is the section in between the bents that uh, I only have a five inch deep joist pocket and that's because that's right where the uh, right where the, the wedges go underneath that one in the uh, in the tie beams so anyhow so what I have to do cut that back there and set in back two inches because that's how uh, that's the depth of the uh, the joist pocket. Just can't talk again today. Um, but then you see I've got an angled cut that sweeps back. Now there's a reason for that. It would be a lot easier just to cut this out square. It would be much easier to do that. But if you cut that out square, right where that meets, right there in that corner, creates a weak spot so if you get a good load on that joist 
it's and it's funny how it works but if you get a good load on that joist it's going to split out right there right at that 90 degree angle but if we come back and we angle it back this way it doesn't make those growth rings so tight it actually spreads it out a little bit so it gives it more strength so just your little pointer for uh, when you got to do a floor joist or something like that um, and you got to notch it out you want to make sure you take it back don't just make a 90 degree so I'll roll the camera again as soon as I uh, put this thing in place showed you me putting one joist in so I guess it's better than nothing but like I said in the intro tomorrow hopefully the weather will be a lot better and we can uh, maybe get some better footage for you and the window is even blowing the camera around today you can hear it hear it a little bit in the video so Arnold I apologize buddy but there's gonna be some music in this one to cover that mess up um, so like I said if you guys feel like it please subscribe you don't have to, but uh, it's appreciated if you do. Um, for those of you new to the channel and you want to catch up on what we've done so far with the barn, how it's been done, um, there's I've got quite a few videos on it and some videos explaining the timber frame process and some of the things you need to look for. And we'll keep going with the explanations. So uh, if there's any questions at all, um, feel free to ask the other good online sources, and I mentioned it in a few videos, Forestry Forum, Timber Framers Guild, a couple of books, one by Steve Chappelle, uh, Timber Framers Workshop. There's a couple by Jack Soban out there that, that are really good. I encourage you, if you're interested in doing this project, do not just take my word for it on what you should do. Check your resources out, because there's going to be a lot that I'm going to miss. Not intentionally, but that's just kind of the way it is. So anyhow, you guys have a good night, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you on the next one.